Just a few weeks to go until the transfer window opens and Celtic are targeting three J-League players to help their bid to reclaim the Scottish Premiership title from Rangers. Let's go off to Tokyo where it's half past ten at night or thereabouts. There's Dan Olivitz from the Japan Times. Dan, thanks very much for joining us. The players Celtic are interested in, Dezen Maeda, Reo Hatate and Yasuke Idiguchi. First of all, have I pronounced all those correctly? And if I haven't, please correct me. And what can you tell us about them? You, you were pretty close. The <laughs> great job. It's Dyson Maida. Reo Hatate is perfect. Yosuke Idaguchi, the emphasis is on the first syllable. Um, it, it's a very interesting trio of players. You have Dyson Maida, who uh, just collected the Co Golden Boot winner uh, or award at the J League Awards tonight and was in the best 11. You have uh, Reo Hatate, who is uh, a midfielder who can also defend and played a good bit of time at left back this season but was registered as a forward and also made the best 11 and you have yosuke Taguchi, who is more of a holding midfielder more of a defensive midfielder who is absolutely capable uh, of scoring great goals on occasion so it, you sort of have this uh potentially fascinating uh, line from sort of the you know the holding midfield position uh, to the goal uh, if all three sign which which is far from a guarantee uh, Maida has worked with Postecoglou before how significant might that be I think it'll be very significant uh, when uh, Postecoglou signed with Celtic I think we all expected him uh, to go after Maida and in that sense that is part of what made Fudahashi uh, such a surprising signing is that nobody saw it coming everyone thought that he was going to take uh, Maida or uh, Ado and Iwu uh, with him uh, to Celtic and we didn't expect him to go after uh, Kyogo Fudahashi so I think he absolutely understands Maida as a player they have good chemistry uh, they he knows that Maida has a nose for the goal uh, so it makes perfect sense uh, for him to go after a player that he's used to and, and who understands the kind of football that he's trying to implement there might be Leeds fans who are raising eyebrows at the talk about Idaguchi given that he was signed I think it was a four and a half year contract wasn't it in 2017 never played for Leeds in the first team is he a much better player now uh, he is a player. Uh, that signing was very straight. I, I should say that his name emerging at the Celtic part is very strange. Uh, he is still capable of playing as well as he did uh, in 2017, which is when he was really getting attention. Uh, in 2018, he did sign with Leeds, uh, but he spent a season and a half on loan in, in Spain, in Germany, uh, had trouble getting appearances. He had a bad knee injury that kept him uh, from playing a lot. And eventually he went back to Gamba Osaka. And he hasn't really played fantastically for Gamba this season season, if we're being honest, but the, the team as a whole has not played fantastically. They finished mid-table uh, after sacking their manager, uh, and, and things did not go well, and you, you, he maybe need, needed a, a better level of, of player around him in order to perform. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, and clearly sees something in him. Maybe he saw that amazing goal that Itaguchi has scored against Australia uh, in the final round of qualifying for the 2018 World Cup. I think we all remember that. It was a fantastic goal. I was pitch side for that. But uh, is he a player that can break into the Celtic first team right now? I don't know. Is he a player who can even qualify for a work permit in Scotland? Uh, that's, that's a very open question right now, because we don't know if he has the caps, if he would be able to, to get an exception. Uh, so if Celtic see him as a project, uh, low risk, high reward. I think that if he joins the team, if he, if he settles in well, he has a lot of upside. And I think that Celtic as a club are looking for players with a lot of upside who they can invest a little on and get a lot from. I hear your scepticism, uh, Dan. What sort of fees might we be talking about for any of these three? I think that if Patate or Maida go for any less than about two and a half or three million pounds, uh, it's highway robbery. Uh, these are two young uh, players whose futures lie with the national team. Uh, they are possibly going to represent 
I mean, they did just represent Japan at the Tokyo Olympics. Uh, they could represent Japan at the 2022 World Cup and for one or two World Cups beyond that. Uh, so it's insane that I'm, I'm seeing numbers of one and a half million for Maida. Uh, I've heard that uh, Frontale won 2.4 for Hatate, which is a bit fairer. Uh, we'll see. I, I think that Everyone knows what Celtic paid for Fidohashi, and they all, all the clubs are going to want to make sure that they're not getting uh, done over uh, with uh, an overly uh, inexpensive transfer fee or even a free transfer. I don't think any of these players are going to go for free. Uh, it's just a question of what's negotiated and what form these transfers are taking place. I was going to say, given the, the hit that Fidohashi has been so far, I think he cost around about five million. Is there evidence of a lot of clubs from Scotland and maybe elsewhere sniffing around for J-League bargains now? Uh, uh, the J-League has been uh, a an increasingly fertile ground for clubs from across Europe, not just in, in Scotland now, but of course uh, Germany, Belgium, Portugal, uh, France, Italy, uh, Clubs in Europe know that there are lots of bargains to be found in the J-League. Uh, the J-League has been progressing toward uh, being able to to ask for higher transfer fees, to get better value uh, for their young talent who are leaving. Uh, you think of uh, players in recent years like Ritsu Doan commanded a decent fee uh, when Yuto Nagatomo went to Chizena and eventually Inter uh, back in 2010-2011. Uh, he pulled in, I believe, about 2 million euros, and that was a revolutionary fee at the time for a J-League player. Uh, so I, I think clubs know that there are bargains to be found. Uh, J-League clubs are more willing to let Japanese players go if their ambition is to play in Europe, uh, but if they have sort of done enough service to their home club. Uh, but that is a culture that is slowly changing. I've talked to league officials uh, in recent weeks who have talked about the need to change that and the need for clubs to bring in this revenue, uh, because that is the only way that they will continue to build and continue to grow their academies and continue, and continue the cycle of bringing in good players. So I think the era of players going to Europe on free transfers is coming to an end. It's just a question of, of what bargains are going to be found in the mid in the the short to midterm, uh, I don't think that every player is going to draw the same fee that Fidohashi drew. Uh, but in a couple of years, when you start seeing more players of his level, you're going to get closer and closer to five million uh, for that initial leap. And then you look at how much uh, Tomiyasu got moving from Bologna to Arsenal. You know, you see the value uh, that these players are drawing once they're in Europe. It's just a question of when will that value come to Japanese clubs earlier in the transfer process? Dan, all of it's live from Tokyo. Great to get your expertise as always. Thanks very much.